So first off, we've got the refrigerant going from the compressor, passes up to a reversing valve, and then we're going to send that refrigerant through this coil, changing it from being a superheated vapour to being a liquid with a tiny bit of subcooling. And from there, we're going to send that off and into this BC box. As that refrigerant comes into the BC box, it's going to come up to a gas liquid separator. At the moment in time, it's just an empty bit of copper. There's nothing really going on at the moment in time. We've just got liquid refrigerant passing into there. We're going to draw that liquid refrigerant off the bottom of that gas liquid separator via LEV1. And we're going to pass it into this tube and tube heat exchanger. And we're going to use this to subcool that liquid refrigerant. The way we're doing that is we're steaming a little bit of refrigerant that should be going through that tube and tube heat exchanger. And we're going to feed it through LEV3. So I've now got refrigerant that's dropped in pressure. It's now desperately wanting to boil. I pass that, say, a tube in a tube inside that to subcool it to around about 20 degrees. So the idea being is that when that refrigerant passes off to the indoor units, it's still actually 100% liquid as it goes through the expansion device. We run the indoor units as flooded evaporators. That is until they're within two degrees of set point. So I've got my subcooled liquid refrigerant. I send that off to my control valve. So I've got a set of control valves down here. A and C on this side, which are going to be open when I'm doing cooling, and valve B on the other side, which is going to be shut because we're not doing any heating. I send that refrigerant off to the indoor unit. I say it goes through the expansion device. We've got that big pressure drop, at which point it's now trying to boil at around about zero degrees evaporating temperature because we aim for that. That's how the compressor is being controlled. So zero degrees evaporating temperature or around about 7.2 bar. Passes through the expansion device on the indoor unit, boil it all off from being a liquid to all being a vapour, and we've got the vapour coming back. As the indoor units get to within two degrees of set point, it starts backing down the expansion device, which means the low side of the system starts getting lower, so it's going to go below that 7.2 bar, so it down to sort of six bars, something like that, at which point we actually slow down the speed of the compressor to bring that back to 7.2 bars. So that's how we're controlling the speed of that compressor. On the basis of the indoor units working fine, we've boiled that refrigerant all off from being a liquid to all being a vapour. I say I've got the return leg coming back into the BC box and that passes back off to the outdoor unit. As that refrigerant comes back to the outdoor unit, next thing it comes to is an accumulator. This is acting as a buffer vessel, because at the end of the day we're ramping this system up and down, therefore we're not going to need all that refrigerant at all times. But it's also acting as a way of making sure that whenever we've got vapour getting taken off the top of this, off to the compressor, so a bit of protection to make sure if there was any liquid to come back from the indoor units, it's not going to damage the compressor. We're also using it as a way of drawing some oil back for the actual compressor as well. So from the accumulator, off to the compressor, and then we start that refrigeration circuit all over again. <laughs>